Hello everyone, this is uh, Mike Vanguardia with The Phone Company, and I'm here to talk to you about product cybersecurity, specifically the secure airplane development lifecycle used within Boeing commercial airplanes. And as a short primer on what I'll be talking about today, just uh, wanted, everybody I think understands that the aviation industry is focused on safety. Um, everybody in The Boeing Company works hard to achieve this. Um, we also have a new concept called the e-enabled aircraft. Um, and what I mean by that is that we now have airplanes that have off-board connectivity that may employ the use of commercial off-the-shelf software and uh, services like the Internet Protocol Suite. Um, but so what the good comes the bad though, right? So um, because of this, we now need to contend for cybersecurity threats. And so the way airplanes are developed now need to take this into consideration. And so malicious intent via cyber methods is an air concern that needs to be accounted for during design, development, test, and analysis. So, so developing a product that is both safe and secure is of the utmost importance to the company. Um, we also need to protect you know, our airline customers, protect our brand and the aviation system as a whole. In order to do this, we need to secure the airplane, but we also need to secure those data links, that connectivity, and build a company culture that puts security right up there with the, where safety is today. Only then can we truly have an airplane that's secured throughout its entire life cycle. Now it sounds simple, right? So let's talk about the complexity and what this really means. Now this chart really kind of shows that, you know, aviation is, is pretty large in scope and you can have all the security you want on the aircraft, but if we don't do are part to the rest of the ecosystem, meaning the ground systems, maintenance, you know, the, the federated systems that might come in through SATCOM or global navigation, um, then we're not as secure as, as, as we need to be. And so Boeing is, is spending a lot of effort and time working across these different parts of, of aviation. And as, uh, again, and we'll talk about some of that stuff that uh, here in the next few slides. And so, as I kind of talked about, uh, connectivity, we have seen a growth in this in the enabled aircraft. Um, unfortunately, uh, with, with all the good, you know, comes the need to drive cyber protections now. Um, and so this is a new, it's a new norm within aviation. Like there was a time when uh, cybersecurity wasn't a big deal, but those days are, are long gone. And so this is gonna require protections that are both on the airborne assets, you know, the avionics, the airplane systems, and those type of devices, as well as processes and um, controls on the ground-based systems. Um, to achieve this, you know, because airplanes are a global commodity that fly all over the world, um, information sharing is one of those key enablers. Um, you know, we partnered with the Aviation Information Sharing and Analysis Center um, to get some good uh, threat intelligence and, and basically just to build trust and in, in relationships. So in the case uh, of a cyber event, you know, that can affect multiple stakeholders in this industry, um, we have those uh, relationships to be able to you know, share that data. And we're actually getting to the point where with the connectivity, um, we're now gonna need a way to manage all these connectivity solutions um, and basically the networks, just like we do on traditional ground systems. <clears throat> so that's definitely gonna be the norm. And then I got, I got a couple of these line charts to just show the relationship right now between safety and security. So on the left, we have safety events. And what you'll see is that over time, those safety events become less common and actually, you know, based on good uh, learning from um, mistakes, learning from history, uh, you know, they tend not to re show up or repeat themselves. Um, conversely though, on security though, you know, we know that the attack surface grows over time. And so in the case of an aircraft, which typically has a life cycle of, you know, close to 30 plus years, if you were to never update, you know, the systems on the airplane, what kind of security uh, issues might have popped up in between the initial certification and, and then that time frame? So we know that that's a, uh, an issue to solve, um, and, and we are working towards that. And I'll, I'll kind of talk a little later about what we've done to, to help mitigate that. Now, Boeing Commercial Airplanes has been involved with network security um, since '94. Um, that was when we first released the white paper for the 777 that really looked at what would happen if you used a tamper maliciously or intentionally tamper with software. 
Um, so we had some lessons learned from that. It kind of opened the eyes to some of our, our designers. Um, then came the 787 with the e -enable, the first e-enabled platform. Um, and, and we've actually continued to, uh, you know, add those type of systems to the rest of our fleets. So the 37s and 777s and 47-8s. And essentially, uh, the FA at the time has realized that, uh, you know, existing regulations did not adequately account for intentional misuse. And so we have something called special conditions. Those are the requirements levied on us by, by our regulator. Um, they kind of fit into two different buckets, protect the aircraft from internal passenger access, those that want to do a harm, protect the aircraft um, from those trying to attack it external to the aircraft. Um, and so right now we're actually, uh, we're in the 2020 timeframe. Um, we have some new uh, guidance coming out that will, is a little more inclusive and talking about securing the whole ecosystem. I'll talk about those, uh, those standards here in a bit. And so <clears throat> let's talk about uh, what it means to have a, a secure aircraft architecture. And so one of the things um, that airplanes are, are built around is a something called domain model. And they're specific uh, to, uh, as defined in A-Ring 664 Part 5. I have a diagram on the next slide. It'll give a little more explanation. But essentially, there's three different trust levels on the aircraft. You have your front of aircraft, the aircraft control domain. Those are systems that, uh, you know, uh, really have a command and control uh, impact to the aircraft. You have those that sit in the airline information systems domain or services domain. Those are systems that are used to support maintenance or aircraft uh, efficiencies and whatnot. And then we got the, the PIES domain or your passenger and information entertainment systems domain. Now, each of these domains has, has different trust levels and they also have different designs and protections, you know, to mitigate any uh, intentional cyber intrusions. Um, these protections, along with some administrative physical access and operational controls are what to holistically together provide security for an aircraft. Now, as I was briefly just talked about on the previous slide, the A-Ring 664 Part 5 uh, model is something that's in a published specification. Um, this actually, uh, this view right here, I kind of broken it into different views, a security view, responsibility, airline ops, roles, and functions. This is similar to a software architecture design pattern, uh, say a 4 plus 1, where you have different concurrent views to account for uh, you know, different aspects of those domains. And so in the security view, we have what is done in the closed part of the network, the, the aircraft, that's done by the airframer. We have those responsibilities that are done on the private side, um, which are those for the airline to control. And then we have things, um, you know, the, the passengers, as, as myself, I'm a passenger, I have the freedom to bring my own devices, whether it's a cell phone or a tablet. If I'm on the ground, I can use at t or Verizon, you know, to connect to the internet or other stuff like that. Um, and so there's different trust domains, they have different roles and they each come with their own different threats. Um, to give a little more uh, granular view on, on the connectivity and how they relate to the aircraft domains, uh, this is a pretty busy chart, but it uh, just kind of shows you, uh, there's a lot happening right here. So on the far left in the red, that's our aircraft control domain. Those are systems that are, again, needed for uh, safety of flight typically and command and control of the aircraft. Some of the data links that are used on there are your L-band SATCOM for safety services. Uh, that would encompass things like uh, ATN OSI, ACARS. It will make use of mediums like uh, VHF uh, if you're over, uh, over terrestrial networks, uh, SATCOM if you're oceanic. <clears throat> we then have the, the middle of the airplane, which is the AISD. There's a lot of different ground network interfaces for that, uh, mostly broadband, anywhere from cellular to Wi-Fi. Also can use SATCOM in that regard. Um, that SATCOM though is a KUEK band SATCOM. And again, those, that domain is mostly for airline operational use uh, to support flight crew, uh, maintenance crews and, and cabin crews. And then at the back side of the aircraft, we have uh, again the entertainment domain. And this is what as a flying passenger, if you've ever wanted to get internet access while you were flying, you're gonna connect to your IFEC, your flight entertainment connectivity server. That's gonna, again, normally be a third party like Iridium or MRSAT um, that's gonna provide that for you.
Now this Venn diagram right here is to, to just kind of show the intersection of, of, of two, two main things. And so we all know that aviation safety is, is by far the main focus of all regulations in commercial airlines or commercial air aviation. Um, but then we also have, you know, all these other systems on the aircraft that are maybe have nothing to do with, with safety or, and they're just, uh, you know, for, uh, for quality or passenger experience. That's the aviation cybersecurity. Um, again, there's not a whole lot of regulations um, around that. But in that intersection, the inner circle is where we have our aviation cyber safety. And these are under purview of the regulator. Um, and this is really making sure that systems that have a <clears throat> criticality associated with them um, based on their design assurance level, that those systems are robust against cyber security concerns. So in other words, to say that is a reduced uh, chance or likelihood of a, a safety event happening in these cyber means. And so that's, again, a new area that's getting a lot of focus. That's where... Um, going and it's a trusted partner spent a lot of time focusing on. And so what else is Boeing doing right now, um, you know, to get to that secure and safe aircraft? And so we actually uh, do the airplane certification, um, something that is different than a, a typical airplane certification is now there is a separate activity to account for the security aspects. So almost like a security certification just just to look at the malicious uh, misuse. This demonstrates uh, the security compliance. It verifies um, that the airplane meets the stringent security requirements. Also make sure that any other guidelines and, and things that the regulator is going to uh, review is, is also accounted for. Uh, we're spending, uh, you know, like most companies, we're always trying to innovate and, and find new cool things uh, to make us more competitive, to make our customers find more value. Um, and so we're partnering up with both internal and external parties. Um, some of these are private entities, others are uh, like academia and universities to go ahead and you know work together to, to come up with some new stuff. Um, things like machine learning and AI, you know, blockchain, gotta throw that out there because that was uh, the buzzwords of today. But uh, you kind of look at those, uh, work with those different folks to to come up with new solutions. We have a dedicated team that's looking at air to ground interfaces. How do we get more data off the aircraft um, so we can do protective maintenance and trending and things like that. Um, we also spend time doing risk assessments and risk uh, management. Um, we subscribe to the NIST framework, cybersecurity framework. Um, this helps us focus on where we're going to, uh, you know, what the big rocks are to go solve and, and spend money accordingly. Um, something else that's kind of aligned to risk management is the use of tabletop exercises, threat teaming, war gaming, different words to say the same thing as we're going to look at, you know, with different stakeholders to see, uh, you know, are our assumptions good? Where, where should we be focusing? Are there any gaps in, in those assumptions and whatnot? And a, and a new thing that uh, our team uh, within Boeing and product security has just stood up is a team dedicated to doing a product security incident response. So as we get more uh, vesting uh, partners and, and working with the security researcher community, we need uh, folks that are dedicated to uh, handling any issues so that we can mitigate and fix those accordingly. And also to account for the sustainment. Now, most folks realize that the operational phase of any system is, is the long, it's the longest period uh, and, the, and the most costly. And so because aircraft, you know, are a 30 plus year flying um, machine, we have to do the security sustainment activities to make sure that those aircraft remain cyber resilient, cyber secure over that life cycle. To help us, uh, you know, investigate that, uh, we do a lot of testing. And so we have a dedicated secure aircraft cyber test lab. This lab has a uh, Mattering of different systems that we can go use to uh, to test, but it also has reach back capability to other parts of the company and different other labs, whether there's different configuration or other systems. <clears throat> this allows us to do penetration testing both in house as well as with uh, you know trusted third parties that we've brought on board or uh, collaborated with to go look at stuff. And then lastly, we have these uh, public and private partnerships that we. Uh, are doing. You know, we're only as, as good as the folks we surround ourselves, and so we take a, an interest in, in leading uh, industry standards activities, working with their European counterparts. Uh, one of the uh, initiatives that we're tied into is their aircraft cyber 
initiative, um, and that's a tri chair with the FAA, DHS, and DOD, and, and working with some of those special programs. And then I, I talked about the Aviation ISAC, and that's uh, something that we're heavily involved with. And so I just kind of talked about a, a, our secure lab. We call that our SCORE lab, and that stands for Center, our Secure Center for Operational Research and Experimentation. Um, we do a lot of different things in here, from R&D to incident response, uh, forensics if needed. And again, this is just one of the, the capabilities that, you know, as the airframer, having access to the embedded avionics, the different avionics buses, and having all of those broke out into a, a way we can uh, have access to them uh, really helps with demonstrating, uh, you know, the security of the airplane. And again, uh, as part of that uh, new focus on, on working together, again, with the folks like yourselves here at DEF CON, um, we've stood up a uh, vulnerability disclosure kind of program. We didn't have one. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, that's something we just stood up. Uh, if you can see it there on the, uh, the URL right there. Uh, that helps us in, you know, folks that do responsible disclosure. Also trying to partner with, again, the Aerospace Village. Um, and other organizations that are really focusing on, on making uh, good partnerships, um, education, uh, and teaching each other, you know, both sides of the business, the aviation side and the, and the security side. And again, those, those partnerships I just talked about, like uh, the ACI working with different national labs, um, airlines, consultants, or whatnot. Again, the goal is to, to do all of this work together to identify new issues, new gaps, things that maybe we didn't think about so that we can make our products better, safer, more secure. Um, so, so speaking about uh, secure airplane development, and this uh, wanted to talk about some of the processes that we use to go do that. So we had the concept of a system engineering V um, in the system engineering, but we focus on a system security engineering V. Um, what that really means is it's, it still subscribes to the same systematic process for doing design and development, uh, but adding those security activities on, on, as an abstraction layer on top of the normal system development. And so what that means is, you know, we'll do system security analysis. We'll make sure uh, we'll do requirements verification, uh, make sure that those systems have all the right requirements um, to reduce the risks based on, on those type of activities. Threat modeling, attack surface analysis, Similar to how we do fault trees and fault hazard assessments, we do the same thing for security through a threat tree and, and looking at the anti or gates that could lead to a, a security event. Um, those all aggregate up to what we do then at the airplane level. So we do this for each system on the aircraft, but then what does that look like? You know, maybe you don't have a, a significant risk at a single system, but if you were to aggregate all of these different risks across the integrated aircraft architecture, um, does your analysis change? And so we do it at the airplane level as well. And then we also do uh, the testing. Um, some things you can't analyze away. You can't do through analysis. Um, and so especially when we're talking about robustness and resiliency, we do a lot of the testing at the system and aircraft level. And that covers your traditional requirements-based testing, as well as that those type of more invasive, the penetration testing, the, the robustness, and, and then looking for vulnerabilities and, and things that have already been documented. Um, kind of talked about the security standards, and um, there's a whole lot of them in aviation. The top three are, are probably the most centric to uh, aviation cybersecurity right now, and those are DO-326, DO-355, and DO-356, and their European counterparts and EuroK. Um, those are all centered on how to do security risk assessments, how to do aircraft secure design, and actually they're going to become the new methods of compliance. Um, on how to certify aircraft from a security standpoint. I lifted a couple others, uh, A-Rank 811, that's, a, that's an older, it's a little stale, but still has good information on it. Um, the NIST kind of risk assessment guide and, and risk management framework, although not aviation centric, they still have a lot of good information. Uh, a couple of these are, are just uh, specific to how to do a, a security event logging, A52, A35 is how do you do secure software loading using PKI and digital signatures. Spec 42 is used within aviation as more of a uh, digital information and certificate policies and, and whatnot. <clears throat> so these are just, uh, again, some of the uh, industry best standards that we use to help build and design secure aircraft. 
Um, some of the principles that are called out, like in say DL 356A, um, um, and again, other places uh, within industry um, are kind of listed on the slide here. So we do get a direct benefit from having such a strong safety culture. Um, that means that, you know, typically we want to be safe by default, but we're working towards being secured by default. Now these can be at odds sometimes. Um, and so there's always deconfliction and, and trades that have to happen. Um, integrity monitoring, defense in depth, you know, availability, network segmentation. These, these aren't really new or these aren't specific to aviation, but again, the principles still apply to us. Uh, something that I think is a little more unique on aviation is, is configuration management. Um, so we have the ability to do maintenance and do uh, what we call data loading and install new software on the aircraft. Now to protect that against misuse, we have a lot of different inhibits and interlocks that prevent that. Some of this is discrete logic. We might use a mechanical interlock uh, or an avionics label or bus like 429 that uh, you need to be in a certain state to accomplish that. Um, we do look at systems at design assurance level for their uh, criticality. Um, as called out on DL 178C, we also are now looking at security assurance level that is called out on DL 356, and then uh, access control and authentication, least privilege. Again, these aren't these aren't unique to aviation, but we're we're still leveraging um, the best we can. And then just a plug to the the AISAC, the Aviation Information Sharing and Analysis Center. I kind of talked to them a little bit before. Um, but again, when we're talking cybersecurity and we're talking an industry like this where it has such a global impact, right? If you have, say, uh, an aircraft was to get hacked or, or have some major issues, you would need to know that because that could propagate through a fleet of aircraft across the world. And, and so to help mitigate that, again, we're part of the Aviation ISAC. We help stand that up. Um, we engage regularly with both the airline customers, our supply base, other industry and government partners, um, to, again, to collectively build a better and more secure industry. And so just a couple more slides here. Um, so managing ongoing risk, I talked about us uh, Boeing doing tabletops. Um, we tend to do this uh, through multiple iterations, whether it's a, an existing system that's been out there for a while or, or a new system that we wanna bring online. Uh, but essentially, we want to bring the right people and stakeholders together, get different views and, and, and what that really means, understand what our threats are, um, what do we need to do in the future to, to you know, to build more uh, resilient aircraft. And so that's really pushing us towards, again, getting folks aware of why cybersecurity on aircraft matter and building that new uh, cybersecurity culture. So in summary, you know, just to... One of folks to understand within uh, communities like this is that we don't just stick stuff on an aircraft. We actually spend a lot of time looking at cybersecurity and, and it needs to, and it's looked at across the ecosystem. Um, we're leveraging, you know, the industry best standards and practices. We embed security throughout the um, secure and uh, throughout the entire product development lifecycle. One of the ways that we help to be more secure is, you know, collaboration with our stakeholders. Um, because that's really the way that we can reduce risk collectively. We do take a proactive stance on managing ongoing risk. And so, you know, it just doesn't happen by itself. Cyber safety, cybersecurity, and cyber resiliency are key principles within Boeing. And ultimately, the message I want to share with, with the folks here at DEF CON and Aerospace Village is we want to proactively work with you. We want to work with the researchers, we want to work with folks that are interested in making the industry better and more secure. And so um, hopefully this uh, gave you a little bit of insight into uh, how Boeing is, is managing uh, the secure life cycle and, and going forward, hope to work with you all someday soon. Thanks for uh, watching and we'll talk to you later.